Scott's Geography Notebook. We're going to explore El Nino, La Nina, and the Southern Oscillation. Now, it's kind of a long thing to say, El Nino, La Nina, and the Southern Oscillation. What a lot of the scientific community have done is they've taken La Nina, they just, uh, it was kind of, they came up with the abbreviation before. Many people were paying too much attention to La Nina. But we've got E, N, and then the Southern Oscillation. It's kind of the same thing, but they say El Nino, Southern Oscillation, or they say the E, N, S, O. Okay, so we can talk about the El Nino, Southern Oscillation. Isolation. Um, but let's take a look first at the Pacific Ocean and what we got going on here. Okay, so I don't have my lines of latitude, but I think that my uh, equator is going to be somewhere right in along here. And we know from our other lectures that we have some winds that are here. We're going to have our northeast trade winds that are coming through. We're going to have our southeast trade winds that are coming through. And these winds are gonna be influencing the ocean as well, right? And so what do we see? It's the equator. So it's all gonna be warm water, but what we're really seeing is this movement of water from the eastern part of the Pacific to the western portion of the Pacific. Okay, what we wanna talk about is the norm first, and then we'll get into El Nino and what we're seeing during then, okay? So what we have is we have all of this warm water being blown across the ocean. And so during normal years, what we will see is that over here in um, Micronesia, in uh, Australia, New Guinea, uh, Indonesia, this whole region that we have right in here, it's gonna be very warm, obviously on the equator, but a lot of warm water. Uh, and that's going to lead to humidity, and that's going to lead to rain, uh, tropical rains. Topical, no, tropical rain, okay? So they usually see a lot of humidity. Okay, but what's happening over here in South America? Well, here's what's happening. I'm going to look at a cross section really quick. Okay, we're going to say that this is the Pacific Ocean, right? What we have is we have all of this warm surface water that is being blown this way. And so it's very warm surface over here on the western part of the Pacific. So this is going to be Indonesia, Australia, everything else like that. Well, what we see over here then as a result is this cold water being pulled up. So we have an upwelling of cool and it's coming from the depths. So a lot of nutrient rich water, nutrient rich water. Okay. What does that do? Well, here's what we see over in South America during normal times, right? They're going to be, uh, it's cold water. So not as much humidity, not as much precipitation. So less precipitation, less PPT. However, excellent fisheries. Okay. So we got a few things that are going over on over here. A lot of anchovies, world supply of anchovies, a lot of uh, fish. Okay. And who eats fish? Well, we eat fish and I guess we feed fish to a lot of our uh, poultry and livestock as well, at least the anchovy, the, the, the fish meal that is there. Don't ask me why. Um, but uh, also birds do. And so um, not only do we have the fish, but we have a lot of bird droppings that actually contribute to a whole industry of, of um, fertilizer over here in South America as well. Okay. So relatively dry, but really good fish going on. Uh, over here, very humid and a lot of rain. Okay? This is going to be one of our normal years. This is what we like to see. This is all normal with our warm water being kind of piled up over on this side and cool over here. And uh, uh, let's see, we'll put in a few birds. Go, 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 go. Okay, and uh, yeah, okay, perfect. And little fishies. Anchovies are very small. I was with my mother-in-law one time and she wanted them on her pizza. It was terrifying. Okay. Anyway, um, maybe they came from South America. I don't know. And there we go. Right. Now, 
every year right around Christmas time, right? So we got Peru, we got Ecuador, kind of right in this area, kind of all in through here. Okay, usually around Christmas time, we do get a little bit of, I'll do it in red, we get a little bit of warm water coming down. And so they start to see their fishery count, the fish count decrease just a little bit uh, during Christmas, right around Christmas. And so they associate it with the name of this warmer water right here as El Nino or the child. Okay, cool. But then it usually goes away in a week. Now, sometimes things are not so perfect. Okay. Sometimes having to do with what sounds like, we're still getting a lot of this stuff figured out, but having to do with our pressure systems over here in the Western part of the Pacific. Okay. Remember that we've got our monsoonal climate going on as well go over here. We've got our high pressures and our low pressures. Okay? Because of that, sometimes we get a higher pressure over here. I know I don't want to make it like a strong high pressure. So we'll just get a little pen and we're going to do a little higher pressure. Okay. That means that the air isn't rising. It means that it's not drawing as much. And so what happens to our Northeast and our Southeast trade winds? They're weaker. Notice how you can hardly see those. Oh, so sad. Okay, so what happens to that warm water? Well, it accumulates over everything. As a matter of fact, sometimes we see a counter current. Oh, stink, okay? This is disrupting what we normally like to see. And what we normally like to see is plenty of rain happening over here and healthy fisheries over here and no flooding over here. Right? But if we build up all of this warm water over on this side, if we take this little guy and instead of pushing it all over here, we just end up with warm water all the way across. We don't have that upwelling of cool, nutrient-rich water. It's going to be warmer over here. The birdies won't be coming because the fishies aren't there. Oh, no. So it's going to be warm over here. Okay. And it's the equator, right? Warm and humid. More humid. And over here, it's just hot and dry. What? Okay, what happens when it's hot and dry? Well, things start to burn. Drought. Fires. Okay, pretty bad stuff happening over here when we go into what is called a, a stronger El Nino event. Okay, now we also call it an oscillation, right? Because the water's pushing this way, but it might be pushing this way or this way, right? Just like that oscillating fan. Do you see what we're doing here? Back, forth, back, forth. Okay, so we've got this oscillation going on in the Southern Pacific. Okay, well, good. All right, so we've got droughts and we got fires over here. Well, over here, we have severe rain, heavy rain and flooding. Okay. That's not normal, right? Usually along their coast, it's relatively dry, okay? Um, and their fishes have all gone away. If we have a good color, no fishing. No fishies. Okay, we shouldn't say no fishies at all, but like half of what they would normally get. And that's what they saw at least in the 70s. Uh, that was one of the counts that I saw. Okay, so much more rain here during an El Nino, much drier over here, a lot of fires that we see over here. Remember a few years back, we have these uh, devastating pictures of the koalas getting their little feet burned over here in Australia. Yeah, they don't like droughts over there. Okay, but it, there's, there's this other thing which is called teleconnection. When we see these patterns, tele from a distance, teleconnection. Okay. What ends up happening? Well, one thing that we start to see up here in North America is that uh, the subtropical, just outside of the jet stream, comes a little bit further north. And so what we start to see are a lot more uh, warm tropical storms coming in. Uh, I say tropical. We should say warmer, uh, warmer storms. Okay. Like 
a tropical storm. Okay, cool. So we get a lot of rain, but California really depends on snowfall. And these guys do not drop snow. All right, because the water's warmer, it's going to be going up in the mountains where it should be getting colder and dropping snow, and it just rains there again. And if we already have snow, then it could potentially melt some of that snow. That could be bad. Okay, so more rain that we see along our coast. Uh, in terms of fisheries, we've got all of this warm water being built up here. And so we do get tropical fish. So our fisheries that we have along our coast, they really start to see a lot more tropical species. If we could see the whole world though, other things are happening as well. One thing that we start to see is we start to see over in this region, those tropical storms, um, well, it's going to be hotter and drier here, but what it also does is in the Atlantic Ocean, I don't have it here, but in the Atlantic Ocean, it starts to dissipate and we don't get that same low pressure systems. And so what we will usually see during an El Nino year is less, oh, I need, uh, can we get this to work? Sure. Less uh, hurricanes in Atlantic Okay. So there's this connection that we start to see. It really kind of tweaks with everyone. It starts to mess not just with uh, the Southern Pacific area, but we start to see more precipitation here. They see less precipitation in the East because they're not getting those as many tropical uh, storms there. It really has this impact everywhere in the world. Okay. Now, what is La Nina? La Nina came along a little bit later. And what La Nina is basically saying is that it's not El Nino. It isn't the water going back that way. It isn't normal. It's like normal 2.0, right? And so it would be even more so of this coming across. This would be like La Nina. And so we get warmer water building up over here. And we get more tropical storms here. And we get colder water that's upwelling over on this side. That's kind of what our La Nina is. If we picture our El Nino and just think, okay, well, you know, it's a very, uh, uh, man, uh, um, binomial, right? It's either the boy or the girl, right? So this would be the boy, right? It's going to be El Nino right? and La Nina is just going to be kind of that opposite, but a little bit more than, than what we would normally see. Right? So, uh, there we go. We have El Nino, La Nina, and the Southern Oscillation, abbreviated by the ENSO.